Here we go. How exciting. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Let's check out these orbs. There's nothing on tab. Oh, there it is. Okay. The pinball says Franco Nigerian. The theme is horses and swords. This pinball is White Diora. The backlash shows a female figure in mourning. A note. NB. The spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. Well, there we go. So we've got several things that we've got a staircase down. We've got this entrance. Okay, let's check out this thing right here. Five real. Awesome. We were very low because I blew it all at places. This is like another pinball machine. Over there, in the corner. The pinball machine? Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Oh, pinball inside this game? That would be cool. Lit. A phrase almost synonymous with the Insulindian pinball scene. Any pinball scene, really. If Kim likes board games and role-playing games, maybe he likes pinball. So let's see. Kim, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Pointing to the machine. The pinball machine. Gordy's Goats. A classic. Yes. Wait, you've played it? A little. Uh-huh. I knew you had. Feels like a lot. Too much to play it again. <laughs> let's take a closer look. Oh, no way. Awesome. Oh, great. What? Why are you sighing, Kim? Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Oh, fortunately, we just got five more real so we can play it. Get the game on, finger boy. Those flippers are ready. Look, we're leaned over the game. This is cool. Let's read the text first. Above the painting of a mustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The Mesk legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. And I imagine we are going to be heroic Gordy. Let's inspect the playing field. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the play field. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. Super sweet. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped, which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. You know, I don't really know if Superstar is or is not a pinball fan, but I certainly am, so we're gonna we're gonna play here. Here we go. We're gonna spend one real. Alright, how do we play? Oh, it oh takes it's lighting a while up to get Look into at that. a rhythm. But it's pretty lighting up. soon, you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. I feel like a more clever person than me could come up with a really good and probably dirty joke around three goat-faced balls, but it's, I, I just don't have it. Let's go. Go, go, finger boy. Finger boy. Okay, that's a new one. I feel sorry for the goats. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Wait, what kind of guy was he? The kind of a guy who uses the word savages a lot when recounting his travels. A mask nationalist. Oh, what a surprise, a racist mountaineer. An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining hall, surrounded by wall-mounted hunting trophies from every continent. That's not cool. He also hit his wife and kids. Other people's kids too. Sometimes pets. Hateful little man. Wow, what a piece of shit. But you seem to be having fun. I am, because it's just a pinball machine. So I'm pretty good at this. Your game is definitely improving. The jolly goats are flying all over the board. And although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. I wonder if this is going to be a skill check. And maybe if it is, it's probably hand-eye coordination. So it's pretty lucky that I just threw back on the the found sneakers, the super expensive ones. Concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths. But finally, the opportunity presents itself. One of them gets through. Okay, we're going to obviously continue here, but... 
Also, our breakthrough on, on Wasteland of Reality is about to happen, so as soon as we're out of here, we're going to be able to internalize that finally. The words pale rupture light up on the speaker panel, and the machine starts filling with a thick, milky fog. Something's happening. There's the fog. Congratulations. This is where the game ends. It's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. Wow. Kim is really familiar with this pinball machine. There's so much fog, you can barely see anything. Some is actually leaking out of the machine, and one by one, your goats start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. You're down to your last goat, going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point, but that goat is something special. Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. Let's go, go. You're in a perfectly balanced system where neither you nor the pal is able to get the upper hand. This could go on forever. Wait a second. What does it mean we're bad at ball games? Wow. Wow. We have an 8% chance. Our reaction speed is 4, and that's actually increased by, by the shoes I put on. Kim, it can be done. Just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. You will eventually make a mistake, and then it's all over. Yeah, there's no chance at this. And it's a red check. We can't try it again. Uh, this is a one-shot deal. We'd give up. And I, I wouldn't put clothes on to change this. But it would be cool if we added a point here. We could add a point. Let's see what happens. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, yes, I can. Wait. This is reaction speed, right? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. I think Superstar wants to win this. We're going to spend one of our, what is this now, eight points on this? Okay. Okay. Let's see. That helped us by 9%. That's as much as I think he would spend on it, even though he really wants to win. Here we go. Stay on the ball. How? Oh, if you can't even see it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we almost made it. We almost made it. We needed 14 and we got a 12. Oh well, that's okay. The last goat plummets into the fog with almost suicidal glee. That would have been, I think that would have been really, really cool to win. There goes nothing, finger boy. Okay, thanks, interfacing. Well, it's been a long time coming, but we can finally internalize Wasteland of Reality, so let's do that. Wasteland of Reality. Congrats, you're sober. It will take a while for your body to remember how to metabolize anything that isn't sugar from alcohol. So you're going to be pretty ravenous soon. Eat plenty. You can expect your coordination and balance to improve in a couple of weeks. In two months, you might start sleeping like a normal person. Full recovery will take years though. It'll be depressing and it'll be boring. Don't expect any further rewards or hand claps. This is how normal people are all the time. But is it? Many of the normal people I know are drinking all the time. Let's check out the bonuses. Minus one physical instrument, insomnia. Oh no. This is terrible. This is the worst thought yet. Minus one physical instrument for insomnia. Minus one inland empire for sober. Minus one suggestion because we're boring. Plus one psyche return of the self. Oh. So this plus one psyche will cancel these out. And no positive effects from alcohol, which I speculated about. Huh. This might be the first time I forget a thought. And this was one we paid heavily for. Wow. This is... Wow. Let's, let's take a look at the art. So this is kind of neat, this, these weird kind of melted off at the kneecaps maybe, feet, and there's some sort of mobile with hanging heads. I uh, can't see too much in the background here. It's all squishy though, all melted. Really neat. Very frustrating, look at that crap. Let's go check out our stats. Well, that, yeah, we're probably forgetting that. Uh, so 
let's go look at our stats. God, that is what a what a comment on sobriety from this game. So our psyche is plus one, right? See bonus from thoughts plus one. Uh, so our volition could be as high as seven if we if our morale wasn't damaged. Inland Empire, we lose one because of that damn wasteland of reality. Um, wait, what else did we? We lose suggestion. We don't lose authority. Oh, but we lose physical instrument. What a fucking shaft! I can't believe it. What a what a total. This is crap. We worked so hard for our suggestion. And we need physical instrument to get into some other stuff. Man, what a shaft. All right, let's look at some of these other thoughts. I think I'm going to forget that one. We have about, if we look at the clock here, we have about seven hours before 2200 hours. So this actually would be a good time to do something like this, which takes about seven hours, cop of the apocalypse. Uh, and I really do want to, since I, this one has always just been compelling to me, I want to find out what about this cataclysm and, and so forth. But... I think having looked at the effects of Wasteland of Reality where we are sober, if we read this, I think Superstar is going to respond to the horribleness of being sober with forgetting this thought and going into White Morning, which is, you see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter at the mention of what? A great white object letting out its sweet smell like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Yeah, I think he's going to overcorrect for this terrible wasteland of reality. So first, we're going to forget this. Yes, this thought will be lost forever. Fuck you, wasteland of reality. Then we are going to do white mourning. And that's going to take five hours. So let's get moving to the rest of this stuff. And we will have a chance to have another thought, uh, unless we want to get rid of something else. Have one more thought, presumably before the end of the game. Let's go check out what else is happening here. First, let's look downstairs. I think that's where this is going. Oh, wait. Who are these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged back in and played? Run your finger across the dust of the white Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life at any moment. The lights illuminating the white-robed woman. Okay. The well, that was ridiculous. We accidentally went up the stairs. And now we're up here. That's... That's a problem. But, okay. What's white Diora? Some kind of inane pinball theme. Probably related to Messina during the DeLorean Age. The history themes are the worst. What a strange problem. I accidentally went up the stairs thinking they were downstairs and then I couldn't stop it once we were in that thought. That's so funny. Deora was one of the three crown cities of the DeLorean era on the Muindi Isola. The others being Rhea Sylvia and at Vesperasket. This theme is all about early airships and beautiful, sad, pearl-laden women. It's quite nice, actually. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. How about we fire one of these bad boys up and play some ball? You can't fire them up. They are broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The royalist pinball. Okay, well we did play the other one, the Gaudi one, but I didn't think we actually were able to play the royalist one after the very beginning of the game. What a dumb name. Royalist pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of these machines about now. Sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Ken. No, I love it. Yeah. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. Yeah, who doesn't love pinball? He doesn't. Well, what about that other one? The Franco-Nigerian ball. Want to play that? No. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to think Kim Kitsuragi. Kim Kitsuragi. We have an 83% chance. Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. A.K.A. Kimball? Exactly. That's what he's known as. His reputation precedes him. You're Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. So now he remembers. 
He looks at us in the silence of the workshop, even though we're at the top of the stairs, then takes his glasses off and cleans them. Fine, I'm Kim Pinball Kitsuragi, aka the Kimball. You remembered. Congratulations. Wow, I called it. He really likes pinball. Wait, but I still can't remember anything else. Wonderful. He only remembers hearing about the pinball policeman. You don't seem to really like pinball. No human being should. It is a game that requires no skill and a childlike affinity to flashing lights and to fantastic science fiction and historic romance franchise. What are you talking about? Pinball actually requires skill. Come on now. It is lame. What? Pinball is not lame. Kim, you're letting me down here. Then why are you called Pinball? I am not called Pinball. It was used to taunt me a long time ago, before I became a homicide detective and got my lieutenancy. How did you... Fine. I was a juvenile police officer for over 15 years. It's how I started out in the RCM. Once I had to infiltrate a pinball ring, as you do when you are a juvie cop. Okay. It was not okay. I needed to become a pinball champion. I trained for nine months. The job was successful and I was moved out of the juvenile wing to homicide. So you're amazing at pinball, but you hate it. End of story. You were a juvie cop for 15 years? That time is over now. I was already a 38-year-old man. It was unbecoming, as was playing pinball. Wow, he has some pretty strong feelings about pinball. So that's why he doesn't want to talk to Kuno. Trauma and stressor disorder from being a juvie cop. Wait, so that's why you didn't talk to Kuno? It's best if you handle the juvenile delinquents. You know what? I, I, I think we are. I think we're going to, I think Superstar, even though we've been working on his empathy, he lacks the empathy to understand how this is going to frustrate Kim. So he's going to say, I'm going to call you Kimball now. No, you're going to call me Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Or on rare occasions, Kim, because it's shorter. Let's go. Yeah, he has no patience for us now. Well, that was unexpected. All right, so let's head back over here because of that weird interaction bug. Oh, another thought. Master investigator, you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? What? What, what do you mean, savoir faire? Nothing. Nothing. You're right. Get in there. Deep. Invade every personal space. Break every lock. Hey, Savoir Fair. It's my duty as a cop to investigate every square inch of this world. And, and where were you when we were trying to get that jacket by jumping? Attaboy. The world's secrets were made for you. They wait patiently for you to uncover them. Wow, we got another potential thought called the Jamrock Shuffle. Let's take a look at that. The Jamrock Shuffle. Temporary research bonus, minus one esprit de corps, confusing behavior, and it's only an hour and five minutes. The problem is, by now it's clear you like to look inside containers. You like to open doors and see what's behind them. Maybe secrets, maybe more juicy containers. Let's be honest, you like all containers. Trash cans, utensil trays, manholes, coat pockets, secret containers left behind by the Philippian kings that hold forbidden relics. Okay, you haven't come across one of those yet, but one day, wait, is that why you're so hell-bent on opening containers? Do you think you'll find the Holy Scepter or the Orb de Mont... Montage? Montagne? Montaigne? Yeah. Welcome to America, where I can't speak anything but English again. Okay, that's uh, weird. Weird. Okay, so let's continue in here. Double check there's nothing left on this pinball machine. Let's never go this way again. That was so strange. The machine is dead and silent. It needs serious maintenance before anyone can play again. Yes. Let's go through here. Hopefully this leads up to Kalaji's deck. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. Let's look in. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right and just enough room for two people to fit in. This is an odd combination of smells, nougat and sweat. Weird. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. That's like 65 years ago or something. Look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons, Monter, Descente, and an international call for emergency assistance. 
That third one appears to be broken. <laughs> you can't call for help. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. Hey, Kim, it says the last maintenance was in 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. Oh my gosh. Would Superstar be this clueless? Let's go for it. This elevator was last maintained in the future? No, it was maintained in 88 of the previous century. So it's not a message from the future? No, I think the bureaucrats just forgot about this backroom elevator after the revolution. I wonder what this elevator was used for, Kim? Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. Let's climb in, close the doors, and go up. Oh, this is not Klaji's balcony or deck or whatever. Let's check out these orbs. Small windows taped shut with black plastic. You can't see outside. Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. Schematics for a pinball machine. Futurism themed. So this is Klaji's bedroom, and so her deck is going to be out here. So we're now actually above it. The pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up. A long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. What do you think about this, Kimball? The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. This used to be a pinball workshop. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. He taps his foot. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardest bang away at it. Remember the dice maker? Then that means... Whirling in Rags was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade. This is all left over from that. Ah, yes. As the novelty dice maker said, this has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. But I do like a nice little connection. Maybe Lele was murdered over... A pinball debt. But then it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. Could this mean the Whirling in Rags really is part of the Doom commercial area? If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. Gart doesn't like anything. He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. Look, we got a new task this late in the game. Stupid superstition. But still, it would be interesting to see what the cafeteria manager thinks of this. If only to frustrate Gart. It's not a ghost story. It's a curse. And Gart ought to be made knowledgeable so he could perform counterspells. Yes, of course, counterspells. We'll have to enlist places to help too. Looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball machines at some point too. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. We'll finish the thought. Let's see, oh, there's some footprints here. Look at that. And another orb right there. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. I think we might be about to implicate Ruby. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Let's have a closer look. We're going to crouch and study the footprints. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The souls have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. This print doesn't look like the odd sold print we found at the hanging camp. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. Oh, interesting. Okay, this doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, does it? No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot, though. Let's stand up. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. So someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum, from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week, too. You know, officer. He looks at us. This is so good, it makes him forget the whole Kimball memory. <laughs> I haven't forgotten the Kimball memory. The Ludo was a mega investigation, after all. It has no converge with our main investigation, which I would say is quite large. Aha! Aha, Kim. See, we were right. Okay, but what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route, leading to the roof. 
from where you can shoot our victim. This is significant. Sure is. This prince officer could be the prince of our killer. So we can choose to move on, but shouldn't we, I don't know, take a photo or something? Let's move on. Oh, I didn't even notice this drawer before. Let's look at this drawer and then we'll go check out that yellow orb. Oh, a pinball maker's coat, plus one empathy and plus one hand-eye coordination. Really? Really? And what is our current coat? Oh, it's, oh wow, we can, we can really up our hand-eye coordination. Very nice, we'll do that some other time though. Let's check out this yellow orb. There's a tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. Uh-oh. A peephole? You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. I think I can see into Klaji's bedroom from here. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. What are you talking about, Kim? You're the one wearing glasses. Oh, I guess we are too. The footprints on the floor, however definitely suspicious and what were those people doing in there we know the answer to this you lean closer to the peephole instinctively i bet they're doing something quite unnatural there sensationally unnatural <laughs> electrochemistry is just so ridiculous let's finish this thought so what can we do uh uh the only thing we can do now is open this door and this is the door that was barred this is the barred door you tried to kick in before Let's lightly punch the door once more, just in case. The door shudders a bit, as though it were laughing at you. So what's on the other side? We know what's on the other side. Let's unbar the door. Now we can open it. Ah, hello. Hi. And that's it for today. Come back next time when we tell Klaji and Gart everything we found up here on the second floor. Thank you very much for your viewership and support. I love you very much. Please remember to have your pets spayed or neutered.